Hi there, and welcome to Team E's podcast. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about assessments in education. This podcast was created by Tammy August, Shanna Gordon, Roshanna Jones, Tracy Martin, Shirley Wilson, and myself, Mary Fan McPayo. Um, today, we're going to talk about the use of assessments in education, but we're also going to dive into the ethical and cultural considerations associated with achievement and intelligence tests in education. Um, so first and foremost, the use of assessment in education is really a vital part of development. In education, the term assessment refers to the wide variety of methods that educators use to evaluate, measure, and document the academic readiness, learning progress, and skill acquisition of students from preschool pretty much through college and their adulthood. In the United States, all schools participate in using assessments for various reasons. The uses of these educational evaluations are to determine performance outcomes, pre- and post-test as a tool for educators in knowing a student's strengths and weaknesses. Assessment outcomes are imperative in assisting educational programs in monitoring the status of students within the set national standard to achieve higher academic successes. Now, some outcomes can help in the determination of special education placement and supplemental programs such as reading classes to help an individual progress in areas of need. During this podcast, Team E will discuss the uses of assessments in education. Then we'll also review primary ethical and cultural considerations associated with achievement and intelligence tests in school and the importance of such to ensure the reliability and validity of educational assessments. Let's talk about educational assessments. What is it? So to the educational world, assessments are very critical. Assessments have several useful and necessary data when it comes to the public, students, and educators. Um, a knowledgeable author by the name of John T. Guthrie believes that assessments are vital in the beginning and at the end of an education program. There's many examples that can be given as to what assessments can be used for, but the list can go on and on. Um, some of those examples include discovering what an individual knows and needs, establishing that children with special needs should have fitting positions, meeting the needs of individuals, choosing suitable curriculum. Uh, if further services is needed, the assessments can help refer the children and their families for more programs. Assessments can also offer information on learning and development and incorporating educational activities into the home. These assessments can also help in constructing policy resolutions uh, and helping individuals discover their skills and their aptitude. Constructing educational lessons, um, it can also help with goals, choosing educational materials to use, and also making vital decisions regarding how to apply learning activities. Uh, furthermore, uh, Assessments can also help observe and improve the education and learning process, notifying the public of children's achievement process, supplying some information of the students' achievements, and also supplying a foundation for public policies. So as you can kind of gather here, the use of assessments in education is really vital to the well-being and the forward thinking of education. All right, so now that we have a general idea of assessments in education, let's go ahead and talk about specific areas in the educational world where you'll kind of see assessments uh, being put into motion. Now, assessments is often used for numerous reasons, and we'll go ahead and discuss some of those here. So the first and the most critical use of assessment is to see the programs, subjects, and the interventions that need improvement for the interests of the student. Hence, assessment aids in the decision making of whether or not a student needs placement in a class that challenges him or her in a learning environment that would give extra help. The second use of assessment in education is to see how much information the student knows about a certain topic that has been taught. In this context, the assessment can be given at the beginning of the school year to see what information the student already knows, and then once again at the end of the school year to see what kind of information has been retained. This type of assessment is known as pre- and post-testing, respectively. Another use of assessment is the benefits it offers to the teachers. It's beneficial to the teachers as it shows if their teaching style is improving information retention or if their teaching styles need improvement or overhaul. 
Another benefit of assessment to teachers is giving them a better understanding of where the student really stands in the class. Knowing where the student stands is paramount. It determines if the student needs extra help or time doing something. Assessment allows the teachers to plan additional support or opportunity for the students. Assessment does not only aid teachers, but also parents. For instance, if a student needs extra help, then parents should also help the student at home, either by hiring a private tutor for them or helping their children to learn, especially in the case of a student with a disability in an integrated school or class. All in all, the assessment in education is critical as they show where the student stands and what is needed to be done to help them succeed in their educational endeavors. So let's go ahead and talk about the ethical considerations associated with achievement and intelligence tests. So there's a lot of ethical components that must be considered when constructing and administering achievement and intelligence assessments to ensure the entire process is ethically sound. Ensuring that tests are administered in a professional and ethical manner. It is of utmost importance that the administration complies with ethical standards set forth by the American Psychological Association. The APA even constructed an entire section in its code of ethics dedicated to the entire process of utilizing assessments. Prior to test administration, it's important and crucial to develop an assessment by using appropriate psychometric procedures during test construction. In addition to utilizing proper psychometric procedures, test creators must also use appropriate scientific or professional knowledge for test design, standardization, validation, reduction, or elimination of bias, and recommendations for use. During the process of utilizing an assessment, the first ethical consideration is to ensure that informed consent is obtained from the subject. So according to the APA section 9.03 informed consent clause, it states that psychologists obtain informed consent for assessments, evaluations, or diagnostic services as described in standard 3.10 informed consent, except when one, testing is mandated by law or governmental regulations, two, informed consent is implied because testing is conducted as a routine educational institutional or organizational activity, which is what educational assessments has fallen into, or three, one purpose of the testing is to evaluate decisional capacity. More importantly, informed consent clarifies the purpose of the assessment and ensures that the subject, which is in this case a student, is willing to participate. As with any psychological testing or research, informed consent is crucial in the bigger picture. It protects the data collected, or in this case, test results collected, from being nulled due to compliance failures. During the administration of an assessment, it's imperative that the test is administered and scored in a manner and for purposes that are appropriate in light of research on or evidence of the usefulness and proper application of the techniques. Additionally, assessments whose validity and reliability are well established are encouraged more so than those without confirmed validity and reliability. And lastly, assessment methods need to be appropriate for the testing subject's language preference and competence level. During the test phase of interpreting test results, it's vital that administrators take into account the purpose of the assessment as well as the various test factors, test taking abilities, and other characteristics of the person being assessed, such as situational, personal, linguistic, and cultural differences that might affect psychologists' judgments or reduce the accuracy of their interpretations. Essentially, what this clause indicates is the need for self-awareness of the psychologist interpreting the test results to reflect on possible factors that may sway the interpretation of test results in an unfavorable manner. This clause stipulates that it is the test administrator's duty to ensure all test results are interpreted in a very objective manner. In the case of achievement tests and intelligent tests in education, it's important to understand each child's cultural upbringing competency levels, and linguistic background. Now that we've already discussed the ethical considerations, we also want to take into consideration the cultural aspect um, that's associated with achievement and intelligence tests. 
Culture is a set of ideas, behaviors, attitudes, and traditions existing within large groups of people. Cultural psychologists postulate that one's comportment and cognitive tendencies are often culturally ingrained. Ergo, a person is shaped by his or her culture and individuals shape its culture. Additionally, one's culture affects perspectives on intelligence and achievement tests. At every level of education, educators find established concerns and considerations among diverse ethnic groups. One cultural consideration associated with achievement and intelligence tests is culture's interpretation. For most Westerners, example, American-born uh, individuals, intelligence is defined and understood as a person's smartness or one's ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills within the sphere of academia and beyond. While some Orient cultures interpret smartness as a way members of a community recognize contradiction and complexity and how to play their social roles successfully. Values is another cultural factor. Because values differ cross-culturally and within subcultural groups, it's expected that each test taker will bring different levels of ability, achievement, and motivation to his or her test situation. Further, the nature versus nurture debate is another aspect when considering culture's influence. Among scholars, this debate is continuous and has caused the development of different types of tests, such as cultural fair intelligence tests. Thus, scholars opine, even if translating a test into its native language, it still falls short on both the educational and test taker aspect. Achievement or um, intelligence tests fail be to, because they often do not meet the needs and values of said culture accurately, while also making it difficult to measure an individual's intelligence and or achievement uh, efficiently and accurately. So we finally reached the end of this podcast, but before we let you go, we want to recap this very important conversation regarding assessments in education. As you probably have learned through this podcast, assessment in education is a very important part of child development. We've discussed how educators use different learning skills to find students' strengths and weaknesses. And as we quoted earlier, assessment outcomes are imperative in assisting educational programs in monitoring the status of students within the set national standard to achieve higher academic successes. This process will give educators the opportunity to help students that have difficulties with some of their academic studies. And let's not forget, we also talked about the ethical and cultural considerations uh, when it comes to assessments in education. We want you to be informed and educated and learn more about assessments in education and how it can be used to help us propel the next generation of students. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Have a good one.